why are we here? <laughs> why not? I think it's always a good, good question before any big dumb adventure. I am Ted King, bicycle rider, retiree slash current bicycle rider. Do you remember how wrecked I was? Yeah, so you're, all, you're gonna be less than half of that. Hi, me. Uh, what was the question? How do I feel? Someone had recently asked me, I said, I felt like I've been hit by a car. And I, she said, have you been hit by a car before? And I said, yeah, I actually have. And this feels much worse. It's a non-stop inventory and it'll drive you. All right. So sometime in 2020, when people are doing ever ridiculously longer and longer rides amid a pandemic, we have the mad genius, Miguel Crawford, who says, I can do something even bigger than that. He said, I've created the mega hopper. We got a thousand feet of climbing per 10 miles, 430 miles, 43,000 feet of climbing. What is the Grasshopper Adventure Series? Uh, it is the OG of gravel. My first experience was 2008, I wanna say. They're, they're so well known in Northern California and, and just the history and heritage is something that has been really, really special to be part of over the years. My name's Miguel Crawford. I wear a couple different hats. I teach high school Spanish. I've been teaching for 26 years. As a teacher, I've always had the summers and my vacations to go on adventures. And I just love connecting things. And it feels like an artistic endeavor has over years of putting these together. And so it wasn't simple to think, how could we connect all these together where you're not doing loops? And I sat down and playing around with where I linked nine of the grasshoppers together. And so I think I've put 17 different routes together over the 24 years for the grasshopper, all just within Northern California. We are going to see an absolute bit of everything that the, the area has to offer. I mean, my goal is just to have fun over a very long and painful 430 miles. more nervous now than before the start of a race. I'm gonna go to bed. District. Typically this place is super lively because whenever I'm here I'm hosting events and really showcasing what Healdsburg and, and the surrounding area is all about. That's the whole purpose of this project is to show show the landscape, show the variety, show the adventure that you can have around here and that's why I'm up at 5.45 a.m. to go for this bike ride. Let's do it! Go. It was a perfect start to the day to roll out of here and then within a handful of miles already meeting up with Miguel. I mean, he's without question the genesis of this event. So sun's coming up and you know, we're a handful of moments, we're just tourists. We're 
you know, they're roads that he's ridden countless times that I've ridden dozens of times and we're stopping just being like, that is a magnificent landscape. As we're riding, he's talking about land that he lived post-college uh, early on in the course and, and why that's important to him. Rolling out of wine country here in Healdsburg, going up over deep into the redwoods, beautiful climb, pine flat going out to the coast. You have the, the absolute landscape of the west coast right there. It's, it's magnificent. First real gravel. We're at the watering hole in Casadero. This is a famous spot. Chaz came out and, and rode Willow Creek down Coleman Valley. He's a hoot. You obviously get his energy just by being within proximity of him. Now here we are at the top of Coleman Valley. I'm Chaz Christensen. I live in the Bay Area. We are up in uh, Northern California in Grasshopper Territory. And this is where I got my introduction to gravel and adventure riding 10 years ago. If you're not prepared, this is some of the gnarliest riding I think in all of California. So. Doing this route in one go, the Mega Hopper, 430 miles, 43,000 feet of climbing, is gnarly. There's a lot of good aid stations, by that I mean bakeries. This is a definitely a hefty thing to do in one go. I would do this on a four day bike packer, and I would camp up on the ridge lines, and I would go eat a hot bakery breakfast every morning, and I, I'd probably take four to five days. So the fact that Ted's gonna do it in probably less than 48 hours is a, it's a feat. Kudos to him. I'm gonna ride down this hill and then go to the bakery and get a pastry. Coleman's a roller coaster. I'm gonna head this way. He's gonna head that way. Oh. All right, four and a half riding hours, averaging 262 watts. centuries to go. Okay, what's my rig? Cannondale Super 6 Evo SE, which is my gravel bike of choice. Massive clearance, 700 by 48C tires in there. Zip 303 Firecrest. I'm running it mullet, so I got eagle out back. I got a 46 front tooth chain ring, a 1050 rear. So, I mean, that is a, the perfect range for me. Estimated we're approximately halfway through today, day one. We are ahead of average. We are well over 10,000 feet of climbing. The next 100 miles are gonna be a doozy, but one pedal stroke at a time and we'll make it happen. And we are going up Mount Vision. This is a vision quest. Coming out of Point Reyes, do Mount Vision. Perfect name for the, for the climb because you got the vision, you got a view, 360 degrees. Beautiful view from up there. Vision quest complete. Top of Mount Vision, that was a ridiculous three mile climb. Now I'm about to drop in on some single track all the way down. See ya. Zip back down to the coast and instead of taking the traditional Highway 1, Miguel had us bang a right turn and go up on a Lima Valley trail. single track galore. Those are the kind of trails that are perfect for a gravel bike. Mm -hmm. 
Also rode with my really, really good friend, I mean best friend, uh, Tony Little, who came out. Mount Tam, I think one thing that makes it really special is how isolated you can be so quickly. You've got complete peace and quiet tranquility. And it's just this beautiful piece of, of San Francisco culture, Mount Tam. Molina's Ridge commence. Molina's Fairfax done. Let the rubber meet the road. We call that soul work, do we not? And it's free. Feel free to pedal that one on the way through. One hundred and sixty-five miles and eighteen thousand feet of climbing, but that is a ferocious ratio. The goal on day one was to cover the 205 miles and get to Occidental because I knew upon arrival I'd have a, a place to stay and you know, gather a little bit of recuperation for what was going to be in store the next day. We were just on our way back from dinner and uh, maybe he was doing the rise and figured we'd come check him out. What, what was the time? I think it's like 13 pedaling hours, 14 pedaling hours. What kind of money do I need to go get on my bike and go ride 205 miles right now? I don't think money. I think I need sleep more than any money right now. But I feel like I'm completely empty knowing that I'm gonna be able to rest and recharge a little bit before tomorrow. This is Ted signing off and very close to going to bed. Here we are. It's been now a half dozen years in retirement and it's taking on new and different things. Exactly a year ago, I was getting ready for the Arkansas High Country Race. That was my first bike packing trip. That was a thousand miles self-supported all over Arkansas. And so the, the mega hoppers, it's taken a page out of that. 430 miles is a considerable portion of the biggest ride that I've ever done. It's that element of unknown that just is exciting and daunting and terrifying and fun all at the same time. That was. Old Casadero. <clears throat> it's now about to start King Ridge. One thing that I really loved about this ride is I'm riding them. I'm riding these iconic routes at totally different times of day. So to be at the top of King Ridge at dawn and so to see the sunrise was just oh, it's the kind of stuff that makes you feel special on a bike. Yeah, I can't help but think of meeting my wife on, on King Ridge uh, for easy and obvious reasons, but that one is special among them all. King Ridge, Turn Right, Tin Barn, Skaggs, and then a screaming descent which brings us here to the gate to Lake Sonoma single track. Lake Sonoma. <laughs> I got off my bike 40 times 
I mean, I, I certainly stopped trying to count after it was taking place every... Lesson learned, if you're gonna ride your gravel bike here, be gosh darn sure you have good walking shoes. Ciao. California is a place that I have called home. Um, obviously living now on the other side of the country, it's, it's, it's funny to have these sort of two places to feel so connected. Sonoma in particular is a place that is, is integral in my cycling career. It's, it's the first place I came when I signed my pro contract. Within the first two weeks of moving to California, I was doing my first hopper. I won my first hopper there. Plank, coffee, and Cloverdale. You know, I look back on day two. The, the first part was certainly characterized by moving really slowly and, and trying to be at peace with the frustration of not moving as quickly as I'd like. My name is Matthew Acarino. I'm a, a chef most of the time, cyclist most of the time. But I'm here today riding with Ted, finishing the second half of his epic two-day adventure that he's on. But uh, I'm a, a bit of an adventurer myself, so I'm always up for a good long ride. Sonoma's got great roads. If you're riding road bikes, you know, what happens is all these rural communities out here, they start building houses and because they build houses, then all these little fingers of roads go out into places. So at some point somebody says, okay, here's a road goes to here. Now it's dirt and then it connects to the other side and then it becomes pavement again. And so it's all this mixed terrain riding. That's a lot of fun. Uh, it's off the beaten path and it's kind of endless. And I think for all those reasons, you can uh, have quite an adventure out here. I have so much confidence in him because when he told me he wanted to do this ride, it was like 400 and whatever, 30 miles. Like, walk in the park for you. You've done a thousand miles in Arkansas. You know, this is just like what he loves to do. Sometimes it's a lot easier to sit and watch the dot though than it actually is to do the ride. So I forget that like, oh, this is actually a really challenging feat. And now seeing him, like, okay, yeah, he's, he's human, he's tired. The second part of day two, in one word, is heat. It was, yeah, it was right. stifling. Mm -hmm. We're gonna turn right and then start the climb proper. It's, it's funny meeting up with some folks who have fresh legs because that's gonna, that's gonna push the pace a little bit. At that point, you're just trying to do the final 25%, which is a equally cruel burn. I was looking at that ride as, as over the course of two 100 mile plus rides. Those first 100 miles felt like riding my bike through quicksand into a headwind, uphill both ways in a snowstorm. From geysers all the way down to the base of Spring Mountain where you finally get back to civilization. Getting up over Ida Clayton, same deal. I mean, it's, it's big, flat, hot, exposed, and Ida Clayton has the added benefit of being foolishly steep. I just reminded myself why I don't ride Ida Clayton very often, because that was heinous. Two significant climbs to go. And hopefully downhill and tailwind everywhere else. It was really nice having Middletown on the other side and knowing that there is a heck of a lot of hydration to be had. I think I drank uh, at least three bottles, soda, drink mix. Matt has certainly had no expectation into riding into 
the dark. Uh, so therefore he didn't bring lights, nor did he bring warm clothes. Uh, conveniently, that's a good example of, of overpacking just the tiniest bit, so I had a vest that he could wear. I know Laura's got some pizza ordered up, so that sounds pretty dreamy. I don't know why we're going home. I think we should just start over. And then we became a train because I was on the front with my headlamp, and he just had to follow the wheel in front of him. What I love about an adventure like this is it's, it's something that anybody really can take on. I mean, obviously I'm doing it with this foolish ambition of doing it as quickly as possible, but this is feasible to drop in and do, do sections at a time. Mega Hopper, that's a wrap. This, the Mega Hopper to me represents you know, the, this, this really fast growing facet of bikepacking. And it's, it's, it's almost like I want to I want to put this on the map for bike packers, for people to recognize that you can do so much in this area. I want people to see this as a carrot for them to chase down, for them to go do, for them to, to pursue. 27 hours over the course of a day and a half. That's enough to make me tired. To all, a good night. Spending time in Healdsburg while we lived in California and now from the other side of the country. It has been entirely about the mill district and our goal here is to draw people to Healdsburg and ride bikes and, and, and be part of this growing community of cycling. That has been the goal from day one working with the mill district. And experience the, the town. I mean, there's phenomenal restaurants. There are amazing breweries. There are world-class wineries here. It's a, it's, a, it's a lucky job when you're told create cycling community in a place and try to draw people here and that's, that is the goal that Laura and I in the Mill District share. Hey, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below, share it, let people know about it. If you have questions about the Mega Hopper or any of the hoppers in general, just drop a little comment down below as well. I got links down there to check them all out. That's what I got.